In this problem, we have a small piece of magnet falling through a constant gravitational field along the vertical line, uh, which goes through the center of this metallic ring, normal to its plane. The material of this ring has a resistivity of rho, an area of um, cross-sectional area of A, and uh, we're asked for what is the current. We're also given information about this magnet, which acts as an ideal dipole, so that the radial component of its magnetic field and its tangential component of the magnetic field are given by these expressions. To do this, we first need to find the flux through this ring. And this is a very classic demonstration of how to find the flux through a ring. And it looks like this. First, we have to draw the respective magnetic fields. So we have, if that makes an angle data with the normal, then that would be the radial component of the magnetic field, and that would be the tangential component of the magnetic field, uh, where that's a right angle. And we would just look at the comp uh, contributions of both, the, both of these to the magnetic flux through the ring, and then we integrate uh, throughout the entire ring. But for this problem, we can assume that the distance h is large enough such that we can pretty much model this ring as uh, we can model the flux through this ring as the same as the flux through a spherical cap that encloses this ring. Now, usually this assumption can only be made true uh, if we have a field that drops off as r squared, like a monopole. But for the purposes of this exercise, we'll assume that this is true. And as such, since this is a spherical cap, uh, the tangential component of the magnetic field does not uh, contribute to the magnetic flux through the spherical cap, where the flux would be the same as through this spherical um, through this uh, ring. Therefore, only the magnetic, uh, the radial component of the magnetic field will contribute. And the distance will also be constant throughout. Let's call that the distance L is going to be like that, and it's also going to be over there. Therefore, we can say that the magnetic flux is given by the integral of the radial magnetic field times ds, where ds is a differential area segment of this cap. We can rewrite this as the integral of k cosine data over r cubed ds equals k over r. Well, here r would be the distance from the uh, point of the magnet to the surface of this cap, which is going to be a constant value of L, so we have L cubed, and the integral of cosine data ds. Now we can use one more trick here by relating the area of this cap to the area of this disk here. If we call that area ds prime, then we can make the relationship between ds prime and ds as ds prime equals cosine data ds. And we can do this by noticing that this angle right here is going to be given by data. So essentially, we have k over l cubed of the integral of ds prime, which we know to be the area of the disk, and if the disk has a radius of b, that's going to be pi b squared. But in the problem, we're not given what L is, so we can, we can calculate it using Pythagorean's theorem. We know that, that distance is going to be b, and the height is going to be h. 
So L is going to be equal to the square root of B squared plus H squared. So we can rewrite this as B squared plus H squared over 3 over 2 pi B squared. Now, what we have is that the electromotive force, its magnitude is going to be given by the time derivative of the magnetic flux with respect to time. So all we need to do is integrate this expression, and when we do, we should get an expression that looks like this. 3k pi b squared h over b squared plus h squared to the power of 5 over 2 times dh over dt. But since dh over dt is just the speed, v, of the particle, or the magnet, we can rewrite this as 3k pi b squared h times v over b squared plus h squared over 5 over 2. This electromotive force is going to give rise to a current and it's going to dissipate a potential of IR, where I is the current and the resistance is going to be given by rho times L, the total path it travels in one's revolution, which is going to be 2 pi b, over a, the cross-sectional area of the wire, a. Now we can just rearrange and solve for a. Uh, we note that the pi can cancel up there, and we can cancel one of the powers of b with that, and with that we can solve for i to b. 3k b h v a over 2 rho of b squared plus h squared to the power of 5 over 2. And that should be our answer.